Welcome back to part two on the custom hood. Now I have the plenum ready to go here. I was just about to glass this thing in and it dawned on me that this rough fiberglass on the underside of the hood does not look great. And since when this hood is up, you're gonna be able to see that and this area here, I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna throw some uh, body filler in there and, and sand it down and, and get it uh, a lot closer to what it needs to be before it gets painted. I'll let the body shop do the final touches on it, but it's gonna be a lot easier to do right now before this plenum goes in. So I'm gonna leave this off for right now. And I'm gonna putty this whole area up into here. Now, a lot of this hood is going to be covered with some type of hood insulation. I haven't figured out exactly what I'm gonna do there yet, but keep watching and we'll get right to it. Let's do the title intro and then we'll get started on this. You're watching On The Mark with Mark. Just trying to get what's going to show through here. Now, the insulation of the hood is going to cover this area here, but I'm not so sure I'll be able to get the insulation to cover here and here, and, and definitely this will be exposed, and this up here. That'll be covered, so I think I got that pretty good. I think I'll concentrate on this area a little more on either side and that area. I've got the plenum laid in here, and I'm ready to start fiberglassing it in along the sides. But before I do, I want to strengthen this joint that I made here. This is just a glued up butt joint between these two pieces. So what I want to do is I'm going to add a some fiberglass mat right across this joint. This will be on the interior of the hood and won't be seen. So it really doesn't matter how that looks, you know, it can be basically rough fiberglass. But I do want the extra strength right there, so I'm going to do that first and I'll let that set up for just a little while and then it's going to get put in here. I laid this plastic down here because I didn't want anything dripping through and getting onto my hood, but I am using my hood as a workbench right now, which Probably is not a good idea, but this is what I have for right now. So I'm just going to lay these two pieces of mat in on that line there, and then we'll trim off the ends after a bit. Okay, I got a good generous amount in there. I'm not too worried about the edge because, like I said before, this is going to be on the interior of the hood so in a little while this will never be seen again this combination seems to work pretty good hold it down okay i'm leaving plenty of the resin on there just bridging right across there and that'll be good and strong. I don't really think there's a lot of stress on this area, but this is just, I guess, for my own peace of mind. All right, 
let's layer on thick. The can of this fiberglass resin says you can speed up the cure time by heating it. I have an actual heat gun, but I don't want to overdo it. And I think that a hair dryer will actually give about the right amount of heat. I'm just going to hit it with this. I'll give this 15 or 20 minutes. I've got two places where I'm going to use uh, fiberglass epoxy. And that's right here. That's where this part here and this part here come into the hood right there and where that green tape is over there. And the other place is this leading edge right here. I've got this all scuffed up. This will be on the inside. So I'm gonna, gonna lay some of the epoxy right in this area right here. I don't know if fiberglass resin is glue. It seems like it should be, but why is there epoxy resin for fiberglass then? I don't know. So anyway, I'm gonna lay some epoxy right along here, and then I'm gonna clamp the front, and then I will work some epoxy in here. This, this will be a butt joint right here and over there, and there it's just bonding two flat pieces together. Got the front clamped down good. We should get a good bond there. And I've got a couple of weights on this side holding those pieces down, being held on by the fiberglass epoxy. Onto the actual fiberglass work. I've got the room well ventilated and I'm ready to go. Now I put tape on either side of where I'm laying the, re the mat because I like to be able to pull it off at the end and leave a nice crisp. Okay, that side is done. Time to peel the tape off. I'm gonna start on the far side. I think the fiberglass laid up pretty well. Let's look over here. Got a nice crisp line there. There's the epoxy up at the front. Coming down this side. Yes. And here's the other epoxy area. This is what the hood will seal against on the engine of the Corvette. The nice rubber gasket. This is very flexible and seals to the underside here. Now, the reason I didn't use my original hood, if you look down there, Part of this hood has been cut away. When I bought this car, it had an aftermarket air conditioning compressor on the engine, and it was mounted up high, and it barely cleared the hood. So the previous owner cut the insulation away, and then he cut the inside layer of the hood out in order to get enough clearance. It also was in the way of this air cleaner, so he lost his cold air intake and I wasn't going to have that so I took that air compressor off and put this one back on, put this air cleaner on. 
That's one problem. Another problem I didn't even know until recently, it's missing that piece of metal that goes across this edge. And if you look right there, there's a crack in this hood. That's another issue. It's kind of hard to see, but the pulley on that air compressor did almost rub all the way through this hood. So it's very, very thin right there. I think the paint probably blistered off and that's a little bit of touch up paint on it right there, but this is just really gross. You know, that, that could be fixed, but with that piece missing on the inside, there's already issues. And then down here, this corner's got a crack coming up from the corner. And if you go to this corner, it's kind of hard to see right now, but if the hood was closed, you would see that this corner has been broken off and repaired. And when they were fitting it to meet the inside of this hood um, surround, they didn't, they didn't really sand it quite right. That's how I noticed it. You can kind of get an idea. See how it's, it's tapering in too soon? So that whole corner had been broken off. So between this corner broken off, that corner cracked, that area blistering through all the way, and the piece missing off of the inside, and the piece of metal across the the cowl area being missing and the crack in the fiberglass up there. You're not going to be able to see with the hood open, but this hood is, is kind of warped like that. And so in order to get it to fit halfway decent so that it's flush on the front, it comes way below the fenders. And I'm talking three quarters of an inch. And then it's about flush right here. And then when it gets up to there, it's about a half an inch above the fender there. So this one has taken on its own shape and it doesn't really fit the Corvette. So something had to be done. It's got to go. There's more things that need to be done here too. So that was kind of a major thing. And I really liked that aftermarket hood. So that just gave me every excuse I needed for a different hood. Okay, it has laid up real nice. Uh, I got a good bond. She feels, boy, solid as a rock. I'm real happy with how this laid up here, including right here in the middle. That piece of fiberglass I put on that bottom, on that back side. Man, I, I just can't believe how rigid this is. Now this is gonna get smoothed out by the body shop feel a little bit sorry for them because I kind of left them a lot of work to do. We'll see how they do. I have a lot of confidence in Dan and his crew. But here's the plenum area. Now I'm going to show you what that looks like. So if you're sitting back here, you can see my hand through here. Light right here. And now I can get my whole hand in there. Now I've set the actual door that opens and closes. I've set that on here and I still have a good fit, so that's nice. And then I just put a piece of tape on the actual door itself so that I can pull it and I don't know if you see that or not, but that's how it opens and closes. So since my new plenum is quite a bit deeper, <laughs> this doesn't seal down there onto the underside of the hood. So that's another challenge that I'm gonna have. This is what it looks like here. It opens and closes like that. It's got a solenoid right there. This one's kind of rusty. Um, I have tested it and it does work. Anyway, so there's another problem that has come up, which is gonna challenge me, but that's cool. I'm up for it. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the one off of the hood that's on the Corvette. That, that one's as good as this one. And I'll cut the two apart, and then by joining the two together, 
I should be able to make up that gap right there. So that might be pretty neat. All of this stuff is stuff you'll never see, which is also great. Right now, what I'm looking at doing is seeing if there's a way I can add a little strength back into this hood. I've got this piece of fiberglass. This is the actual part that I cut off the front edge right here. And I think if I turn that upside down, or maybe like that, yeah, I think that could go under there and beef up that edge. Um, I'll probably need to cut off this lip right here because I don't want it to interfere with my trap door. Or this is the part that I cut off of the donor hood and it's a little thinner. It might actually fit under there better. Plus, look how much longer this piece is. It would be really nice if I could get it up into this area and this area here that would really um, bridge all of that nicely now i'm, I'm gonna have to get rid of these parts because it's going in exactly the same spot okay get ready to cringe that piece of the old hood now has been butchered down to this little bit right here but it still has some strength in important areas. And, okay, it goes in this way, but this surface right here is down and, and is doubling up this right here, which is taking a lot of the tension load when the hood gets dropped down. So I'm doubling up that area. Plus, instead of this just being an angle, this, when it gets bonded to here, is going to turn this into a channel. So it will be a U-shape. So it fits in like that, comes back, and then kind of fights and goes like that. And it really doesn't lay in there very good. There's a big gap here. So you might be able to tell I have the hood propped up on its end because I'm going to need gravity to work with me here. So I'm going to put this in and then I'm going to tape it good from the back side. So hopefully my epoxy doesn't just flow out. But if it does, I've got cardboard on the floor so it can end up down there. But this is the plan right now. And I've checked the uh, the flapper and it clears this in fact it's it this doesn't sit as low as the bottom or the the side down here which anyway it doesn't uh, interfere with it we'll try getting this in here goes in like that Okay, is that better than before? Well, that's the way it's gonna be. It's, uh, it's epoxied in there. Okay, let's look at it tomorrow. Well, here it is, day later, and the epoxy is all over this thing. Boy, I got it on thick enough up here. Looks like we could use some filler here. But really, this is how it's gonna look. None of that is even gonna show, but I did want it for the strength. Yes. 
Perfect. Thanks, Sue. You're welcome. Off to the body shop tomorrow morning. Yes, it's back. And I was able to get it painted. And there's good news and bad news here. Uh, my body shop guy, Dan, he did just a great job of filling and smoothing in this area here where I put that piece of metal in this part of the hood here. So this is kind of thick right here, but really happy with how that looks. Now, I'm gonna be covering a lot of this hood with the insulation. So you'll see areas like right here where, you know, it doesn't look great because it doesn't have to look great. This, these side rails, these are gonna be exposed. And then when we get in front of this area here, right where this is on that side too, this is gonna be exposed. So he did a really nice job of finishing in this area. A Little bit of a crack here. That is really something I probably should have taken care of before I took it to the body shop, but I thought he would probably fill that in. The other area that I wanted to be sure it was done really well was in here, because this is going to be exposed along with the perimeter around here. So he did a really nice job and my fiberglass work here. You know, we got a couple of little pits and, and some holes in a few places that may or may not get covered. I thought that might get filled along with this stuff here, but my instructions were a little bit arbitrary. You know, some of it doesn't have to be finished and some of it I do want to look good. So I'm sure he was probably a little bit confused that way. Under here, you can see that's just the raw fiberglass there, but that's fine because that's going to get the cover. There's going to be a cover on this part right here, so no big deal there. And we can see up in through there. So very nice. Now, one of the issues is there's the original color of the car. I'm not very happy with the match of this color. So this may be going back for a respray, which has me a little bit sick and I'm trying to convince myself this is the underside of the hood and it, and like I just got through saying, it's gonna get mostly covered up. So do I wanna make a big deal out of it? I don't know. Really, man, if the whole car was this color, I would I would really be sick. So that's it for now. Oh, I have uh, taken a, a measurement of it. I've uh, weighed it and the new hood now, when I got it, it weighed 26 pounds. Now as modified, I've added nine pounds to it. And the donor hood was 38 pounds. So I'm still probably three pounds lighter than the original hood. This is actually my original hood and I weighed it that's another project. You'll see that coming out here in a couple of weeks. Um, I made it so that it can mount on the wall. So my original hood has become garage art. I just love the thing. But that was after I added some wood to it and a way to be able to hang it with a French cleat. It ended up weighing 45 pounds. So that one got kind of heavy. Well, that's where we are with most of my hood modifications. I've got some work to do on that uh, flapper valve that's gonna go in here. And I'm also gonna be making some kind of a fancy screen on here just to keep the chickens out. Um, but I, I did get quite a few questions about this project and it really kind of boils down to a terminology thing. I get kind of fast and loose with what I'm saying. And there was there's a couple of terms that I used incorrectly. Um, there's fiberglass resin that I used to put the fiberglass cloth in. I didn't use any fiberglass mat. Fiberglass mat is the stuff that's just a mishmash of all directions. It's just a mess. The stuff that I used was actually woven. So that is fiberglass cloth. I put that in with fiberglass resin. Now I also referred to fiberglass epoxy. And really that was just epoxy. There was, there was one product that I held up in the first video that was from, uh, I think it was West Systems. You'd have to go back and look at the first one 
that was one type of an epoxy and that's made for boats and fiberglass and that sort of way. But I also used JB Weld and actually I went through about three of these and it was difficult to get the same thing each time I went to the store. Um, but this one, this is great for automotive. So, and also marine. So I figured marine applications, probably fiberglass boat. I had one of them though, and I don't know where it is now. I probably threw it out. And I dug through my garbage can looking for that first tube and some of these other ones. And I've got broken glass in my garbage can. So, you know, I dug for a while, but I wasn't able to pull anything out of there that I was really looking for. So, so anyway, it, it was JB Weld. And the reason I had what I was calling fiberglass or uh, epoxy, there we go, uh, is whenever I was just gluing a piece of fiberglass to another piece of fiberglass, like the, the front part of the plenum to the part of the plenum that has the hole in it, that was a butt joint there. I used epoxy there. And when I glued the front edge of the plenum down, that was just fiberglass to fiberglass. I used epoxy there. And when I fitted this piece here in at the back so that it was bonded to the aftermarket hood, I used epoxy. So that's what I was doing. Whenever I was working with the cloth, not the mat, then I was using the fiberglass resin that I just bought at my local auto parts store. Uh, and that didn't come with any kind of a fiberglass mat or a cloth. I had some separate cloth. You saw it, it was in ribbons and uh, I laid it on pretty thick and I, I think I got a pretty good result here. I don't think this this thing is gonna go anywhere. It's really actually lifted it by this here and it didn't make any kind of a creaking sound. Uh, if you're wondering where I got this hood, this hood came from uh, J and D. Yes, this hood came from J and D Corvette. They're out of California. So if you go to their website, their website is actually JD Corvette and you look for this hood, you won't find it on their website. And that's one of the things that made this hood so hard for me to find. Uh, they put a version of this hood on eBay that was actually made for 76 through, I don't know if it went up to 82 or not, but anyway, and uh, I called them up and I said, is there any way you, know, you can help me out? Cause I have a 73. So this hood would fit on a 73, four and five. And, and anyway, I was trying to convince them to sell me just the top half of the fiberglass. And then I was gonna peel all of this stuff off of my donor hood and mount it on that outside piece. And uh, the guy there says, well, why don't we just make you one to fit your 73? And I'm like, well, yeah. He goes, yeah, we, we don't advertise that one, but we have that, we can do it. Yeah, it would take us, it took him like 10 days to actually make it because they don't make any of them in advance. And I don't know if he gave me a, a, a break on the price or not. I think he did. So I'm not saying what the price was, but I didn't think it was too bad. If he did, it wasn't a lot, but I do appreciate that. Uh, JD Corvette, so here's a plug for you guys. So I, I guess um, uh, we'll call it a sponsor, okay? They didn't give me this hood, okay? I'm plenty into it. I know they made a profit on it. So that's just fine. So thanks for coming along with me on this project. This is something that I have been planning for a long time. I had that donor hood. I think I had it at our old house. So that was seven years ago. So I've been moving that stupid thing around for at least 10 years it's been in my way. But uh, not only did I get the parts off of it that I wanted, but a friend of mine is uh, working on a custom 68 and uh, he uh, was like, hey, what are you doing with the rest of that hood? And I'm like, it is yours. So that thing is out of my garage, out of my basement. So I'm really happy about that. And we'll see what we got to come up with for this paint. I have to admit, I'm a little bit sick about it. But, uh, you know, what is here looks pretty nice. We'll, I'll do some flybys on this thing. We'll get a, a look at it. There's a couple of places where... 
I think it, it could have maybe laid the paint down a little thicker, but back to the fact that this is the underside of the hood, so what are you gonna do? Okay, I think I've straightened out everything that I needed to talk about. We talked about the weight, so I really didn't gain much weight by doing this. Still a few more little projects that I'm gonna have related to this hood, so more Corvette content coming. Thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe. Thank you.